is this offseason moving the way you expected it would for the 49ers? Or has it been surprising to you? I got to say, for me, it's been very surprising, but I, I don't want to influence your answer. So you go first and forget that I said that. No, it, it is actually very surprising, but it's kind of what I had hoped for from the sense that one thing that we talked about, I think it was last week, Grant, we talked about the strategy of the 49ers and how up to this point it had been signing a bunch of younger players that were ascending, but they were for the first time reaching a crossroads with a bunch of older players that are on big time deals that are probably on the decline. And are they willing to be cutthroat? We didn't know the answer to that. And I think now we do. Eric Armstead is no longer a part of this team. Kyle Juszczyk was approached to take a pay cut. I believe if he wouldn't have taken that pay cut, they probably would have let him go as well. So this is something that we're starting to see from the 49ers that, hey, you know what? They are willing to let guys go that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And that's why it's surprising. I don't know that it's surprising from the guys that they signed. They haven't signed a huge name. I know that the 49er fans are looking for this gigantic name to come to the 49ers and sign the way that it's always been in the past. They've done a good job, I believe, of filling out the roster and trying to make things shake. But the biggest surprise is the approach to their current players and asking them to take pay cuts. And then if they are not willing to do so, it's like, all right, you're out of here. So that, I have to say, is a major surprise. I had hoped that they would be shrewd when it came down to these things. I didn't necessarily expect it. And so it is surprising. Here's where I'm coming from. I, I like that answer. <clears throat> One, I'm surprised that maybe I'm not surprised that they went all in with defense. And we'll talk a little bit more about <clears throat> the fixation on defense on this team. But I guess what surprised me or what I was looking at is what were, the, I always wanted to know what Adam Peters did. He was like the legend on this team. And he, you know, Everyone assumed that he was really good at his job. I mean, because he has a great reputation. He just got hired as the commander's general manager. And I want to know, like, what is the Adam Peters effect? What's going to happen without him? And I don't really, we don't really know, but it <clears throat> seemed like the first thing that the Adam Peterless front office, head by John Lynch, tried to do was get Eric Armstead to take a pay cut. And he didn't. And then I, I just don't think that the plan A for this team, this offseason, was to June 1st cut Eric Armstead. I just mm. don't. It's, it's messy. It's not super helpful. And they had to really oh. scramble to replace him. To me, I'm guessing, I think they thought he'd go for it. And he didn't. And then they had to make the best of it. And maybe that's the best move long term. Maybe he's going to miss a bunch of games next year and it's, just, it's like ripping off the Band-Aid, but it feels like their first big decision may have not gone the way they thought it would. And then today they tried to sign a linebacker to replace Dre Greenlaw, important move. And that didn't work out. I don't know. I, I could imagine Adam Peters is in Washington giggling a little bit like, mm, what happens when I'm not around, huh? I mean, maybe he doesn't take pleasure in it. Maybe maybe he's, you know, like, oh, that's too bad. But maybe that's the Adam Peters effect. Like, getting things done that you wanted to get done. I, maybe that's part of it. Yeah, I, you know, I do kind of get the feeling that the 49ers are missing on some of the guys that they've probably been chasing. And you never know. It's impossible. It's not like you hear. All you hear is where guys sign. You don't necessarily hear where they don't sign. But one thing that I can say is, here's what we do know that is factual. Eric Armstead, longtime 49er, unwilling to rework his deal, gone. Kendricks said that he was going to be a 49er. He's now a Dallas Cowboy. And what is it? Rayshon Jenkins visited the 49ers and the Seahawks. He chose the Seahawks. So that that's those are factual things. And so if those things have happened and we know about them, then it's likely that they are missing out on some other players that they wanted which is interesting because the 49ers are used to being kind of big brother to some of these other teams and getting probably whatever they wanted. And maybe that's not the case this year. And they're having to work. Now, is that the Adam Peters effect? I can't say that it is or it isn't, but it is interesting that it's happening to a team that is really in win now mode about as much as you can be. And, and it doesn't bode well for a team that is trying to win a Super Bowl. And it's going to be a really tough climb to get back. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> They went out and got Leonard Floyd and Yatur Gross Matos, a, uh, a respectable platoon to play defensive end. Both guys 
on two year deals. One guy making nine million a year, the other guy making ten million a year. So it's a sizable investment. Meanwhile, D'Amico Ryan's, who runs the same scheme, same defense, gave a two year, what, fifty million dollar deal, something like that, to Daniil Hunter. How did D'Amico get Daniil Hunter and the Niners didn't? What's the difference between those two deals? I'm sure someone can explain it to me, but it seems like you got two guys for 19 when you got the other guy, the other team got one guy for 24. I'll take the Neil Hunter. How did that happen? Yeah, I think the 49ers, you'd have to throw an Elliot into that deal as well. I mean, really, they got those three for the price of Daniel Hunter, right? I know I get, listen, I get, I do understand it, but I also think that the 49ers defense was at its best when it had crazy depth. And that's probably the approach that they're looking to go. Now, I also think that they probably did kick the tires on Daniel Hunter. I don't know that they expected the price to be 25 million. I personally expected around 20 million, but then mm. Grenard signed day one and it was 20 million. Mm. At that point, you pretty much knew that Daniel Hunter was going to take a lot more than that. And that's mm. what happened. So, I'm also curious to see where does Eric Armstead go? I wouldn't be shocked if he goes to a, a team that's competing with the 49ers in the NFC. Now, the Texans do make sense, but if he ends up in Detroit or the Rams, would you be shocked? I wouldn't. I'd be a little wary of signing Eric Armstead. You might, re I mean, give him a real thorough uh, physical pause because are you sure you know what you're getting? At this point of his career, I don't know. It's going to be a one year incentive laden deal, I would imagine. Yeah, I, would. I bet you it's going to be like $8 million guaranteed and heavily incentivized, would be my guess, on games played. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I do, I got to say, I am surprised that the Niners haven't added a single player to their offense yet. We'll talk about that more in depth later. Um, but again, maybe I'm, I shouldn't be surprised because Kyle made it pretty clear after the Super Bowl, the offense was not the reason they lost the Super Bowl and defense was. So Well, they've, they've also got Kyle Juszczyk, which is, I mean, he's so important that, you know, you can't even talk about getting rid of him. Otherwise, people freak out. So why would you add anything? Yeah, I mean, his motion before the snap is everything. They, this whole team sure. would fall apart if he didn't go in motion before the snap. Yeah, no, it's a very good point. I, you know, I guess I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Because a lot of people think football is about, you know, talent it's not it's about pre-snap motion i'm I sorry That's you didn't know that but i'm explaining football to you you thought it's about which uh, team is better no it's true. about which team goes in motion more before the snap with a guy who doesn't get the ball yeah. and the thing about yeah. the niners is he's the only guy who could do that no one else could go in motion because it's really hard to move from here to there without the ball it's hard well, and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't even play 50% of the snaps, but when you're going in motion as much as he is, you're going to need to take every awesome. other playoff. So it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be hydrated. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, when, when you check goes in motion, all eyes are on him because why would you look at Christian McCaffrey, Debo, Samuel, Brandon, Ayuk, or Christian or, or George Kittle? So he really has that effect. He's a weapon. Okay. He is. So I'm not One catch a game. One catch a game. I mean, it's hard. I mean, you just don't know when that catch is going to come, and that's what's so scary about it. If not even. Defense. And that's what makes him even more. He had 14 catches in 17 games last year, so mm. that's why he's so deadly. Because, okay. you know, you may, he may not even get the ball. And that's what the Niners <laughs> want you to think. That's true, yeah. It's yeah. true.